And how's it going? A lot of folks are already here. That's really great to see. My name is Samaya. I'm going to be the facilitator for this session today. Uh, and it looks like a lot of folks are talking in the chat. That's really great to see. Uh, welcome back, Carlo, and welcome back, Janine. I see a couple of familiar faces. Uh, great to see everyone. All right. We will just wait a couple more minutes and then get started. What I'd love for everyone to do is just introduce themselves in the chat and tell me where you're from and where you are in your UX journey. So right now I am based in Philadelphia and I'm currently looking for roles that are UX strategy roles or director of UX strategy roles. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of ID8 Labs. And so that's what I, I do as well with my partner, Chris. Would love to hear where everyone is from. That's great to see so many faces. Okay, nice. Hello, Sophie from Vancouver, welcome. And Chieni, I hope I'm saying that right, from Seattle. Uh, and Karen from Chicago, Sophie. Manali from San Francisco. Christian, welcome, great to see you all. And Emily from Vermont. We have quite a bunch of folks joining us from all over today. Really cool to see. Right. So yes, please feel free to keep introducing yourselves. Uh, what I'm gonna do is we have a very tight schedule today. And so I'm gonna get right started. Uh, there's a lot to do. It's a very interactive activity and workshop. Uh, so welcome to Redesigning Airbnb. Let's just turn this, share this. All right, I'll have the chat open. So in case people have questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But I'm going to do a walkthrough of what, what this workshop is going to entail. So we're going to go through a couple of ground rules, especially for the beginners, folks who are completely new to UX design. I'm so glad that you joined us. And then we're going to start diving into some of the design tools uh, right away. So we're going to define problems in Miro board, and then we're going to redesign Airbnb in Figma for 30 minutes. So yes, it's Airbnb, not Slack. And a little bit of information about me. I am the facilitator of the session. I also am a co-founder at ID8 Labs, and I actually got into UX design from mechanical engineering. I made the pivot to product design. I have over seven years now in experience in startups, agencies, corporations, and I really love startups. I really love mentoring startups at Wharton's Venture Labs, and I just love innovation. So wherever there is a cool innovative product or feature being built, you'll find me there. And some ground rules before we begin, uh, I would really want to make our time together as efficient as possible. Uh, so please put yourself on mute and only um, unmute if you have something to share. You can also make use of the chat. I'll constantly be checking it for contributions. The biggest thing, of course, is just to be kind and open-minded and always build on other people's ideas. So here, this is a, a no judgment zone. We really want to create a psychologically safe environment both good and bad ideas should be shared openly and freely. And actually, sometimes a bad idea could lead to a really good idea. So please share whatever ideas you have as they come to you. And the purpose of this session is really just to make our time together as intimate as possible. I would love it if you could share your ideas about the topics you're passionate about, especially around Airbnb. And I really would love to find like-minded individuals. So feel free to share your LinkedIn in the chat if you guys want to network. And ultimately, we're just trying to come to a consensus on problems and solutions with Airbnb and just get a taste of design thinking and UI UX design. The purpose of the session is not to start building solutions right away. So as we start coming up with problem statements and solutions, we might get overexcited and we might get ahead of ourselves. But remember that this is just a brainstorming session. It actually takes a lot of work to validate some of these ideas that we have and really see it to fruition and actually build a feature or a product. And so we need a lot of additional data before we can turn some of these ideas we come up with into a reality. So we would have 
have to do UX interviews, stakeholder interviews, more ideation sessions, focus groups. We'd have to understand the business model of the company or the, the, the product, the monetization strategy, and then the marketing strategy. So there's a lot that goes into, uh, you know, creating and developing a successful product, but this is just the beginning. And in fact, you know, UX design is not just about making things pretty like you see in Dribble or Behance. I know that when I first started out in UX design, I kept seeing all these beautiful, stunning images on Dribble and Behance, and I got very intimidated and overwhelmed by it because I thought, oh no, I'm never going to be able to design something so beautiful and so pixel perfect. But the reality is, if you work in UX design, about 80% of the work that I do of UX is gathering context. So gathering user interview data, stakeholder interviews, competitor analysis, information architecture, coming up with multiple concepts, wireframing, workflows, process and journey maps, and really trying to gather as much context around the, the problem I'm trying to solve and the ideas that the possible solutions. And then actually 20% of UX design work is actually making it look pretty. And you get a lot of help with that. So doing the style guides, the colors, typography, high fidelity concepts, and focusing in on just one concept. So if you are a beginner, no worries. We're gonna be generating a lot of ugly ideas today, today and that's on purpose. And if you'd like to learn more about design, I would recommend going to www.idlabs.co and there you will find a Slack channel. We have a community of over 6,000 designers. We post free resources all the time so that you can learn about UX design. And so I would just love to invite you to join us and join our community. And so with that, I hope you leave this session feeling like you can make an impact on the world. And I hope that you feel empowered to actually take action on your ideas. So if you're just starting to learn UX, I hope you keep diving into more free courses or resources and keep learning because it's an incredibly fulfilling field to work in. And I also just hope you leave the session with a different perspective than when you started. So allow your mindset to change based on the ideas that you're hearing and allow yourself to rethink your ideas. That's a really crucial part of UX design. Some of the most successful UX designers and entrepreneurs are constantly able to rethink their uh, solutions and rethink the problems to come up with a more innovative approach to solving a problem or to creating a solution. And what you might be wondering, well, what's the purpose of doing all this? Why do we do ideation workshops? And the truth is, when we do this in the field, it's really to bring people with different points of views together. So usually we're trying to get executives in a company to align on their goals and help us define a problem for us to solve, for us, the designers or uh, the consulting agency that the corporation might hire. So we try and get executives in the sales, marketing, customer service, tech, design teams to come together and talk about their different perspectives into the problem. And then we want to get them to agree on priorities. What are the biggest priorities they're seeing for the company? Can they help us put together some sort of product roadmap? And what are some high impact, low effort initiatives that we can tackle for this organization? And so, um, really that's kind of the the level set we do when we're in consulting or when we're doing design workshops in an actual organization but then there's also a fun element to it sometimes we take ourselves a little bit too seriously so right now this is our opportunity to play to not be too serious and just to have fun designing something iterating on things that's what we're here for Another way to look at these ideation workshops if you're completely brand new to UX design is this way. So think about what we're gonna do today as putting down the rough, broad brushstrokes of the designs that we want. We're trying to really define the problem, define a couple of solutions, but we are in this stage right now. We're in this rough brushstroke phase. We have nowhere come near to like, you know, putting all the details into the design and making it look really perfect. So we're in this low fidelity broad brush strokes, explorative phase, more playful phase, and only with more research and more context gathering can we get to a level of what we call high fidelity in design where you have a more fleshed out product idea. 
If you're also brand new to design, I'd love for you to think about it this way as well. A lot of junior designers think about design to be a very linear process and you have to start in one place and finish in one place. And you have to go through the five step steps of the design process, empathy, define, you know, whatever, whatever those steps are. But really the reality of it is it's all over the place because um, you're gathering data from different elements and data sets. And so senior designers tend to think more like this visualization. They're gathering and associating a lot of disparate sets of data and they're trying to come together, bring them together with ideas or connect the dots, so to speak. And so the design process is really not that linear. It's more about associating and then trying to come up with a better solution. And you'll see what I mean when we actually dig into these activities. If you're also brand new to UX design, I'd like you to think about it this way as well. So think about UX or user experience being the skeleton and the muscles that hide or sit behind the skin, right? So UX is all of the user interviews, the stakeholder interviews, the competitor analysis, uh, the information architecture, really understanding the users, um, wireframing, proto, you know, wireframing, coming up with sketches. That's all the stuff that's behind the scenes. You don't see that. When you see a human, when you see a beautiful made up face, uh, you just see the skin. And that's the UI element of it. That's the high fidelity end product that everyone sees. What they don't see is the muscle and the bone and the tissue. And that's all of UX. So UX is all of that substance that sits under the beautiful skin. So today we're really diving into that substance, whatever's sitting under the skin. Uh, and so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go through one mirror board exercise. I'm gonna share a link to a mirror board and then you're going to start to work in one particular board called defining the problem. And so there's a, a problem statement that we're gonna be working with. And the statement is users want to take a specific action, but problem because cause of problem, this makes them feel emotion around the problem. So we're just trying to create a very detailed problem statement around Airbnb. And we're gonna start voting on our problem statements in Miro board for about 15 minutes. Uh, right now the time is 4.42, so we're on time, I would say. And then Figma, we're gonna, once we kind of define what are our, the top problems we need to solve for Airbnb, we're gonna dive into Figma. I'm going to be sharing a board, so you'll see Figma on my screen, and I'll be working on my design board. But what you'll also see is that there's a lot of empty boards that you can join as well, and you can claim a board and you can start designing with me. And so we're going to go through really rapid ideation sessions where we're gonna try and design five screens in five minutes, which is really crazy. But then think back to the brush strokes that I was talking about. These are super broad brush strokes. Everything is going to look really ugly. And it's not about creating beautiful designs, but just getting the idea and the concept out there on paper. If you're scared of diving into Figma, if you're totally new to design, I would recommend picking up a pen and paper and just start sketching. So when we are doing things in Figma, do things on pen and paper, that's totally fine. And just feel free to you know, talk about your ideas and share your ideas when we do the sharing of the concepts. So why are we doing what we're doing today? We really are doing this whole activity to really understand the problems rather than solutioning things right away. So even in the act of creating all these different solutions in Figma, we're browsing and doing so many different ideas because we don't want to become attached to any one idea. We're still trying to massage the problems and really understand what the problem is. And so just remember that good design at first is really ugly. You're about to see some really ugly designs and then it becomes invisible when it becomes really, really good. So just think about a, a product like Netflix or TikTok, right? Do you even think about the navigation or the controls when you're in Netflix or TikTok? You're just watching really amazing content and you're just getting amazing content at the tip of your fingertips. But if you went to Amazon Prime or you went to Instagram, somehow then the navigation seems clunkier. You have to think before you can access that type of information or that content. And so that just shows you how I would say, you know, products like Netflix or TikTok, 
their designs are invisible. You're not even thinking about how you're getting to the content, you're just in the content. But for other products, Amazon Prime, maybe Instagram, Meta, um, you do have to think, you have to think a little bit. And so maybe their designs are not as good. So really, I, I would say good design starts with being playful and just having fun. So don't take yourself too seriously. This is just a fun exercise, no pressure, even though we are gonna be designing very fast uh, and just have fun with it. So with that, I'll stop sharing. And I'm gonna start giving you access to the Miro board, let's see. All right. So I'm going to type this Nero board in here and just let me know if you have access. All right, I see a couple of folks on there. I'm going to share the Nero board on my screen uh, so that everyone has access to it and can see it. So even if you're on your mobile phone, no worries, just take a look at my screen. So what you see here is that problem statement that I was talking about. And what we can do is there's this left-hand side panel here and you can just take, grab a sticky note, which is the fourth icon from the top, click into it. You'll get different colors. You can choose whatever color you like and then just place a sticky note on the board and you can start writing out your problem statement. So for example, let's do one on Airbnb. Let's say hosts. So hosts want to um, create a powerful profile, but don't know how to stage their apartment, their house, their living space, or communicate benefits. as they are not professionals. This makes them feel uncertain about how to market their living space to prospective uh, b and beers or prospective um, renters, might be a good word. So that was just a really quick problem statement that I wrote. Um, I could of course uh, write a much better one if I had more time, but the idea is just to try and get the ideas out. So even if it, it's not perfect, just you know, try and, and get your, try to articulate what the problem is that you're trying to solve. And Jasmine, to your point, yes, this is recorded and it will be sent out. All right, let's see if we can write another statement. So I wrote one from the perspective of the host. Maybe now I will write one from the perspective of a renter. So let's see. Renters want to find, find living situations with specific qualifications, but have a hard time navigating between different living options, different options on Airbnb because it's hard to compare options. This makes them feel frustrated when switching back and forth. between profiles. This is a problem I have experienced a lot. Whenever I travel, I like to compare different locations, but I end up having to open up different tabs for each location and then it gets lost because I'm trying to compare different features of each location. Uh, and then I lose all my tabs and then I'm like, where am I? Uh, so sometimes that can be hard when I'm searching for the place to stay. All right, 
So we have 10 more minutes for this exercise. So I'm just gonna give folks a couple minutes to uh, write their problem statements. And I'm gonna read out some of these. Homeowners want to earn money from their spare rooms, but don't want strangers in their homes because of privacy concerns. This makes them feel uncertain about the costs and benefits of renting. That's a really good one. Vacationers want to vacation with their dogs, but cannot bring them to most lodging because of pet restrictions. This makes them feel overwhelmed by the preparations required to house them and their pet. Nice. Women want to travel alone and discover new places, but they don't feel comfortable renting an Airbnb because of the lack of security or references. This makes them feel frustrated, stressed, and insecure. Ooh, I really love this one. Who wrote this one? I did, I'm Mariana, hi. Hi, Mariana. Uh, could you talk me through uh, this problem statement a little bit? Yeah, actually I didn't, I didn't know what to write. And then I just thought about me, like in my situation, sometimes I want to discover new places, but here in Costa Rica is not that safe for women like to travel alone. So that's like a stopper for me when I'm like searching via like in Airbnb, because I don't know like what will happen to me if I just go to a random place by myself. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I, I totally uh, empathize with your situation. I, I get a little nervous if I'm traveling alone as well. And that's why I try and travel with my fellow women friends. Um, so this will be a really interesting one to try and solve. Um, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Let's take a look at some of these. So here's one that says, travelers want to book a place for last minute plans, but are unable to due to the background checks often needed to be done in advance. This makes them feel stressed and overwhelmed about finding a place to stay within a short period of time. Ooh, this is a really good one. Here's another one. Customer wants to book an accommodation at a foreign country, but can't understand the description because they don't speak the foreign language, this makes them feel unsure about the booking. Interesting, that's a really good one. How about this one? Women, of, women or people of color or LGBTQ are not able to see if the people offer, offering are open to them or if the place is safe. This makes them feel stressed and not secure. Who wrote this one? This is a really interesting one. Hi, I did, it's good to see you. Hi, Katsia. Uh, could you talk me through this a little bit more? Um, the thought process was that not all the countries are very open to um, the new progressive mindset, and especially women traveling alone, as just the person before me explained that women cannot travel alone in uh, in their place that they're living. So I think people of, um, I've seen people of color commenting and, you know, sharing their experiences of staying in certain places or countries where they felt harassments. So I think there's some sort of a check or some sort of a thing that, you know, tells you in addition to the Airbnb right there that, you know, this area is safe or if even the owners are safe and receiving and they're, you know, open about uh, you. I think that's really mentally assuring uh, to travel to a new place and discover a new place. I get it. Yeah. So it's it's more the psychological safety of will yeah. the host be welcoming to me and yeah. accept me for who I am. Uh, and I don't want to find that out too last minute. Yeah. That makes sense. Yes, definitely. That's a really good one. Let's take a look at this one. Renters want to feel comfortable and safe when they rent a space, but they are, don't get enough familiarity with the host until they show up to the location. This makes them feel uneasy. Interesting. So I think there's very specific groups of customers who feel more antagonized, but I think it's also a general sentiment that maybe there's not enough rapport built between the renter and the host. And so that could be a really good problem to solve as well. Ooh, interesting. Renter wants to have a small party for her graduating, but most Airbnb owners won't allow parties for young adults. This makes them feel stressed and overwhelmed about trying to find a place to celebrate. It's so interesting that this one is brought up because uh, recently Airbnb has tried to create a, a party pooper algorithm to make sure people, they can detect who wants to throw a party. I think it's a little crazy, but who knows? It's, it, we live in an inter interesting world. 
Ooh, this is a good one. Renters want to book to find bookings that are accessible uh, to users with disabilities, but cannot find any options that accommodate users with disabilities. This makes them feel frustrated and forgotten. Who wrote this one? Oh, I did. Awesome. Could you talk me through this one? Yeah, so my ideal process was just um, trying to think about users uh, that are tend to be forgotten. And usually when you are new to UX, like myself, sometimes you forget about accessibility. Yes. So I took it upon myself to think about one that caters to accessibility that is quite common. Because um, usually when you start a design, you may not start with accessibility in mind, but later on you start catering it to it once you do like maybe a couple of tests and realize you haven't really um, designed to accommodate people with disabilities. Interesting. That's a really interesting one. So I'm actually a land uh, lord myself, and I've been renting out my apartment for two years now. Uh, and one of my tenants, she is deaf, so she's hard of hearing. And so whenever there's maintenance scheduled, I have to text her, and I have to make sure that you know people can't knock on her door because she won't hear. But we can tell her a time and text her. So text has been the way to communicate, uh, and it's been really interesting because it's it's just small things that I have to do on my end, but it, it makes a difference for her experience. So really interesting space because I think there's such a different, there's a, such a spectrum of disabilities, you know, folks for wheel, who need wheelchairs versus folks who are hard of hearing. Uh, so this will be a really interesting problem to tackle. All right. Wow, these are, there's so many amazing ones. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I love these really detailed ones. So alternative musicians are looking to get booked for gigs for niche weddings, but the current offerings are too broad and mainstream. This causes them to be overlooked in the vast sea of performers competing for the same spaces. Interesting. So I think this brings up uh, uh, an aspect of Airbnb that's not much talked about. So there's Airbnb experiences and that you can create these events in Airbnb for tourists or folks traveling to your location to come and enjoy. Uh, so I think this kind of ties into the B&B experiences option. Product designers want to create an easier and smoother layout on Instagram to attract users, but do not know how to attract their consumers about the copycat approach. This makes them uncertain on what crowd to focus on. Interesting. So I think this is talking more about uh, marketing your Airbnb, I'm guessing. All right. Ooh, this is interesting. Multifamily unit vacationers want to find rentals that are separate, but in walking distance of each other, but there isn't a way to query that easily. This makes them feel that the effort is too great and settle for hotels. I love this idea of community living or communal living. Uh, and that is a really interesting approach as well. So these are some really cool ideas. Who wrote the one about the multifamily? Um, that was me. This is Aaron. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, we have a big family. So when we travel, it'd be really great to basically have a, a hotel-like setting where there's lots of different units. You can maybe there's shared common areas like a pool, but um, you know, more unique than a hotel room. Yeah, definitely. This is a really good one. Wow. Um, all right, so we have quite a lot of different sticky notes up here and we're actually running out of time. So I want you to, you know, just heart some of the ones that you think are the most interesting or the ones that you want to solve. I'm going to go ahead and heart this multifamily unit one by selecting it. Ooh, someone else selected it. I'll, I'll select this one and then clicking on the smiley face and then putting a heart on it. So that's one way to vote for your favorite. Um, so go ahead and, and do that and see, you know, maybe we can vote on three, three sticky notes. So I'm voting on this one. And I really like the one about accessibility as well. Yes. Let me just click into that. Perfect. And just keep in mind what your three problem statements are that you really liked, because when we go into the design exercise, we're going to try and solve for those three problem statements. So I liked that idea about, you know, making Airbnbs more 
safe, feel more safe to women, LGBTQ members, women of color or people of color. I really liked the idea of making Airbnb more accessible to folks with disabilities and a range of different disabilities. Uh, those are the two I'm keeping in mind. And then just generally building a better connection between hosts and renters so that everyone feels safe. And maybe people can party in their location if that relationship is built, or there could be cool Airbnb experiences created around a location. So lots to think about. Um, I really like the multifamily idea and the idea of co-living as well. So I'm going to think about that as a potential problem to solve when I go design. But with that, I'm going to now switch over to the Figma file. And I'm going to go ahead and share the Figma because we're we're right on time. We have 30 minutes to design in Figma. So let me just copy this link. So I'm gonna be sending over a link to our Figma file. And what I would love for you to do is, if you're completely new to Figma, you can just watch me. So you can just hover on my board and watch what I do. If you would like to play around in Figma and be bold, even if you're completely new to UX design, uh, you'll see a bunch of boards and you can claim your board. So you can click into your name here and type in your name. And then you can follow along with the activity that we do. We're gonna do three activities. We're gonna design five screens in five minutes, three times. And then we're gonna share our work with each other. If you're scared of this and you're like, no way can I do this in Figma right now? Remember pen and paper are always an option. So feel free to do this on pen and paper instead. Um, but I would recommend just going for it. Uh, I will just give a very quick mini tutorial if you're completely new to Figma. There's really only two functions that you need to create broad strokes, brush strokes, and ugly designs in Figma. The first <laughs> uh, tool is the shape tool. So you'll see here this rectangle and you can click into the rectangle and you can choose any shape that you want. So if I click into rectangle, I can create a cool rectangle. So this could be a navigation panel, something like that. Another tool that I use a lot is text. I literally use only two tools and I can click text, write Airbnb. Maybe that's a little bit big, so maybe I have to reduce the size. So here on this uh, right-hand side panel, I can type in number 30 to show, you know, this is smaller text. And then to Carlo's point, you can copy and paste a lot. So the way you design things fast is you can just copy and paste the same rectangle across multiple screens if you want to try and keep up with the timing of designing five screens in five minutes. So that was a three minute lesson in Figma. I know I just threw you into the deep end. Um, if you want more Figma tutorials, we do the have that on YouTube, uh, but this is more about having fun and just trying to design something fast. So remember, Think back to your um, problem statements. What's the first problem statement you would like to solve? And spend five screens trying to solve that problem. So my first problem statement is uh, making Airbnb feel safer for women, LGBTQ, and people of color, uh, and just making it feel safe in general, depending on the country that you're going to. And that's the problem I'm going to be solving for the first five screens. So with that, I am going to go ahead and time us. Oops. All right, where's my clock? So I always like to set a stopwatch timer at five minutes and 10 seconds. So you see here, five minutes and 10 seconds. I'm gonna click start and I'm gonna just go for it. So we're gonna try and make people feel safe. How do we do that? Here's my navigation. Maybe what I could do is I can pull up three different states profiles and I can like do a comparison of three different profiles. So these are my three profiles. Right. And then maybe there's a nice picture here. Let's make that a different color. We're at four minutes and 30 seconds. And then maybe there's stickers to show that we're a certain type of location or 
what we believe in. So maybe this will be a sticker for women friendly or woman host. I always like to find women hosts when I go, I prefer them. So maybe there's sticky notes on like, a, you know, woman friendly or resources for women. Maybe this was like a rainbow colored one for LGBTQ. Um, and there could be kind of badges of honor because, you know, based on that host's history, they have a certain level of, um, rep built up for them. So maybe those could be stickers. And I don't know how to define these stickers well just yet, but you get the point. And so now I can see how many stickers different people have. So this is one idea. We're at three minutes and 35 seconds. All right, what's another way of doing it? So let's just think about one listing and maybe building a better relationship between the host and the B&B &B, uh, subject or renter. So maybe here's the profile, but maybe there's an active chat. A lot of times the chat kind of disappears and I don't know where the chat is. So maybe I have this chat open. So anytime I open up this listing, I can see my chat history with the host and it just makes it more friendly to just constantly be chatting with the host and talking to the host before I rent out the BNB. We're at two minutes and 51 seconds. So here is, you know, chat system going on. And maybe there's even prompts like I can encourage to encourage the chatting. Let's see, here's a oval. So you get the point. So that's one idea. Hmm. What else? How else can we make it more safe? We're at two minutes and 21 seconds. Maybe it's the search options. Maybe in the search filter of Airbnb, maybe there's that's where I can kind of filter by more data. So when I first land on the BNB experience, here's my button to start searching. Let's make it red. Um, and then, then there's a bunch of detailed filters that I can select into if I really wanted to. So you can see these are broad brush strokes. There's no way I have time to build everything out. So I'm just trying to do it super fast. We're at one minute and 39 seconds. And so now, you know, we can see things like women friendly, LGBTQ friendly. Again, I don't know how to define these exactly. Is it woman host, LGBTQ host, something like that? Or, you know, we support, does it need to be a little bit more political on what are their kind of political leanings? I don't know if we should get that detailed. That could backfire in a lot of ways. So let's, let's see, let's think about it. We're at one minute and six seconds. Hmm. I'm like, I really like this idea of comparing hosts. So I wonder if, you know, we can surface reviews a little bit more because maybe that's what will make us feel safe. A lot of times I really just go by the reviews in Airbnb and I, to see what kind of person that, that host is. Um, so maybe it's the picture and then front and center is kind of all the reviews that people leave. And so that makes me feel more assured. And it's just about prioritizing the right type of information. So I can compare side by side these different hosts and the different reviews that people leave before I get into the details. We're at 16 seconds. Is there any other way I could make this experience better? Maybe I could have, uh, you know, here's the search tool, but maybe there's featured locations. Once I click search, like, for the example of the multi-unit living, I'll just finish this thought really quick, even if I'm cheating. So maybe once my search results show up, here's you know the party-friendly location, here's the multi-family unit one. So there could be different stickers on the, the search results that pop up that show what locations, what is a pet-friendly location. Um, so maybe the stickers could go there. But yes, that's, that's it, we're at 510. I'd love to see what everyone is doing. 
Ooh, hi, Chelsea. It looks like you have a lot of really cool ideas. Do you want to talk me through some of them? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Um, so the first screen is kind of similar to what you have of with the like stickers, but instead I have like these uh, pill button where it kind of like uh, tells the user like, oh, we're like LGBTQ friendly or like women um, hosts and stuff like that. And um, the idea is that you can click on to it too and see additional host mm -hmm. and then for the second screen um these four boxes they're kind of like similar to uh suggested so if you're looking for like other, uh just female host then you will see additional host within that um uh, host uh detail page okay so the user can like explore even more to see their other options okay Nice. I love these ideas. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, let's take a look. Uh, Isabel, would you like to share your ideas? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I was thinking about, uh, my goal was to uh, make bookings more accessible. In this case, making filters more clear, more visible to the user through chips, using chips or uh, using uh, the filters page, but in a more uh, visible way to the user. I see. Nice. I like this. I like how you're you're kind of continuing the flow of accessibility and then you open that one and you can see what kind of accessible features there are. So I really love that thought. Awesome, this is really great to see. All right. Ah, I see uh, uh, Kitsia, I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah, yeah, it's right. Um, so my was uh, the, to make it more uh, for the women, obviously, and the LGBT can hold the community. So I think the first thing, as even a person that goes uses Airbnb is I always see the reviews. So idea is that the reviewers are given the um, power of like sort of giving the badges to the you know uh, people mm -hmm. they're renting from so that they can vouch for the fact that you know we were here and this person was that so giving the other people the community the power to uh, tell the truth and be very fair that was the first and the second was basically um about the people offering the services themselves i don't know what the specific word to call that so i'm just referring that so first is an image and then with it is it sort of a description area where they themselves sort of share some sort of guides and tips about to the people of you know uh, women and LGBTQ or women of color if they observe that this sort of discrimination happens let's say in a particular area so they give them some sort of tips like you know you shouldn't do this and do that just to give them sort of sense of security psychologically so that was my second and I was working on the research part but I think time got up. <laughs> Nice. I love the idea that the, the renters can give out the badges. That seems very fair and very truthful. And then the idea of cultural tips is really crucial because what is okay in one culture is not so okay in the other. And just having that know-how to navigate one culture makes a lot of sense. So thank you. Oh, I see someone changed the background color. So I'm going to change it back just so that we can see things. All right. Ooh, wow. Uh, so Kiwi, um, would you like to talk through your ideas? Oh, I see you copied and pasted. Okay, I see. Hi, yeah, sure. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. Awesome. So I guess my idea is kind of like similar to yours. Like, I guess like I was trying to kind of like make it um, friendly for the users from like the moment they kind of like opened Airbnb. So it's kind of like, I, my idea was kind of like for hosts to like give out small badges in different like colors. So it's kind of like trying to color code or like color coordinate for all these like hosts where they can label their like houses. And I was also in the next screen, I ran out of time. But I was also thinking like from the user's perspective where kind of like when you build a profile, you can choose like what kind of houses I'm looking for. So if I know that like me as a girl, I like to travel a lot. So if I'm a woman, I would kind of like choose that I'm a I'm a woman and I would travel alone. So that like hopefully 
if that's capable for Airbnb to kind of like kind of like rank the um, houses where women like single woman friendly or like women traveling friendly kind of like put that rank up whenever I choose something so it's kind of like a little bit of tweak in customizations to like where I'm choosing so it's kind of like I want to make make it more like automatic as opposed to like I have to deliberate to do something for that to happen okay that sounds great okay awesome all right, so we are at 5.15. So unfortunately I have to cut our sharing short and we're gonna now do the second exercise, which we're gonna choose our second problem statement, whatever that may be, depending on what you voted on. Uh, I'm going to choose accessibility this time around. So really trying to make Airbnb accessible for folks. Um, if you did not get the Figma, here you go. And let's go ahead and get started. So, all right, five minutes, 10 seconds. I'm gonna click start and we're gonna think about accessibility. So I'm gonna start by copying and pasting the screen because I'm gonna do more of a flow this time around. I was really inspired by one of the flows I saw someone else do uh, and I'm gonna copy that. So maybe we start with comparing three possible locations and maybe this green badge is an accessibility badge or different types of accessibility. And so then if I click into what this one with the most number of badges because it's the most accessible friendly, I can kind of read what was going on in terms of the accessibility and the badges. So here's a description of each badge because I think sometimes it's nice to have badges, but sometimes there's too many badges, right? There's too many filter sets. So really understanding what those badges are and what the levels of accessibility are. So is it on the first floor? Is it wheelchair accessible? Is it accessible for someone who's hard of hearing? Uh, those kind of things I want to know. And so I can start to read about that. Here's a circle. So here's all the badges. We are at four minutes. Oops. Great, you get the idea. And so once I kind of read the, the, the badge system, I could probably message my host. And so maybe here I have the Airbnb, you know, um, listing and it takes up full screen and then it has the ability to message my host. So now I'm pooling some of those ideas from that first time around, but now I'm talking to the host. Maybe part of accessibility shouldn't be about typing, right? Is accessibility, is typing the most accessible thing to do? I, I'm not sure. Maybe it's also voice memos. Maybe it's easier for me. I'm at three minutes and 11 seconds. Maybe I can send a voice memo. So I'm gonna have a little voice memo icon here. and I can talk to my host. I wonder if Airbnb is okay with me calling people or doing a video call. Let's say I needed to use sign language. I, I could write, yes, but is there a way I could also video call my host? So maybe there's a, an option to video call, especially if you're someone who has special needs, maybe you just need more assurance that this Airbnb has everything that you need. And so a video call could kind of help you suss out the situation. We're at two minutes and 30 seconds. And so kind of building on that uh, video call idea, I've heard that people who are, who use sign language actually really love using, uh, you know, the video calls because now they can actually use a phone before they couldn't use a phone if you were hard of hearing. Uh, so it's really interesting to see how iPhone just makes things so much more accessible. Um, but are there other types of accessibility that we should be thinking about? Let's say, you know, font and, and typography. Airbnb is designed for folks between the ages of 25 and maybe 55. Can we make the size of things more accessible? Uh, so let's see here. Maybe everything is just supersized a little bit. And so that's what I'm trying to show in this screen. And so maybe text is also your host and just having really big text. We are at one minute and 25 seconds. Even with the chat, 
really making that much bigger. One oh nine. What else can we do? Can we make it an accessible view? So maybe if I click a certain because I know this person has accessibility needs, I could click uh, an icon to magnify things. Maybe there's a magnifying glass icon here, the top right. And now that makes everything super sized because I don't wanna make an assumption that somebody needs something if they don't need it. All right, and then maybe I book my experience. I guess, what does the end of that booking experience look like? Hmm. So maybe it could show the listing and then it could show, or this is my bill and my total. So here's my total. And I think a lot of Airbnbs do this, but sometimes they actually pick you up from the airport and you have an extra, you know, they, they provide that extra service, in, especially in places that were, are hard to, um, hard to get to, like islands, for example. Uh, when we went to Santorini, that was a, a thing. So maybe there's this idea of, here's when your cab is scheduled your pickup scheduled for this person from the airport. All right. Wow, Chelsea, this is amazing. You're doing a really amazing job. I'd love to hear what these ideas are about. If you can, if you can speak, if not, no worries. Right. Hello. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for the first screen, it was just kind of like um, when you're on the homepage of Airbnb and there's a filter option. And within that filter options, there's an option for um, Airbnbs that are wheelchair accessible and stuff like that. And for the next two screens, I kind of got the idea from um, this brand called Insert Name here on their homepage. They have this, this accessibility button, which you can see um, right there. Mm -hmm. And with that button, a um, a page will like appear on top and the user can um, change the f format of the page if they need like the text bigger or whatnot, make things more accessible um, on digital. So that was my thought process. Nice, nice. I really love that. Oh, okay. I see how, what you're saying. This is amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. All right. Carlo, I'd love to hear some of your ideas. Oh, um, yeah, sure. Um, let's see. So for accessibility, I kind of uh, was playing around with, the first one was that, uh, the idea of badges, where um, you all users kind of like, if you're trying to rent, you kind of fill out your own profile, like if like what your needs are, like if you need like certain accommodations for accessibility, um, female gender whatever like it, and it doesn't have to be visible but if you stay at a location and you want to give a review it kind of has it in on the back end it kind of slowly gives the renter um like progress bar like they, they can slowly get a badge earn a badge in the back like if enough people that identify as like wheelchair accessible gives you a good review kind of thing then you kind of like earn a little bit more to that badge and eventually earn that badge nice um, second screen is kind of like, you know, showing what badges would look like if a host has like all these badges. And then the third screen, um, it would be nice to have uh, maps of, of the location. So it gives the users a lot more context of where they can go, um, which areas are accessible. Like, if, for example, if it's like wide, if a doorway is wide enough for a wheelchair or if there's a ramp um, or just where you're supposed to stay within the house so you don't have just renters roaming around your house kind of thing interesting um, 
Okay, I love this idea. I love that you thought about the map and accessibility from that perspective. That's really helpful for, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. I also really love how you don't give a host a badge right away. So just because one person said that they were accessible doesn't mean they earned the badge. I like that you have a progressive badge where you know a couple of people have to give you that review before you can fully earn your badge. Uh, so I really like that idea as well. I think that keeps things really honest as well. Nice. All right, let's take a look down here. Oh, okay. I see a lot of really cool ideas, but we are crazy. Time flies. It's already 526. So let's get to that last exercise. And this time around, I'm going to do this idea of co-living. So it sounded like people were traveling alone and it could be nice to, you know, almost like an Uber ride share where you're riding with, you know, strangers. Can you rent a a multi-room, multi-unit Airbnb with a bunch of strangers or a group of people who would be friendly to travel with. And you could, you know, do activities together, do experiences together. I know this was not exactly a problem statement on the board, but based on all the ideation we've been doing, this kind of unlocked this new space in my head and now I have to put it on paper. Uh, so sometimes ideation works that way. You just, it's random. Um, but with that, I'm going to start our timer. So resume 506 and let's go for it. All right, so maybe when I first start my search experience, I could say that I'm looking for a group, you know, looking to rent with a group and looking to be matched. So this could be Airbnb match is my, my new one. Uh, and so then what will come up is the, the list of options as well as people who kind of have already booked that place. And am I, who will, where in line am I to book it? So maybe I have these options. Here are my possible B&Bs. And then I have these little thumbnails of who's already voted in to that particular location. So I can kind of stock and see who else is kind of gonna be living there the same time I'm living there. So there's kind of a social proof angle to it. And I think the social proof angle would make a lot of people feel safe. So it's indirectly solving some of the problems we talked about, because as I'm seeing like, oh, maybe there's LGBTQ members or maybe there's women, I'm starting to feel safer about booking this location because there's people like me uh, or people I would get along with and or people who have the same interests as I do maybe it's like a rock climbers group and I see a bunch of rock climbers there and I'm like okay these are my people so these are the thumbnails and then I can maybe I can do a compare and contrast we're at three minutes and 24 seconds so maybe I'm not sure what place to book yet so maybe I can do some sort of multi-select let me see if I can create that copy. So I can compare three places. I'm going to highlight three of these as yellow to show that it's a multi-select experience. And so now we get to that screen where it's like the multi-select, like compare my three places. So here's all the three Airbnbs. I think I have some time so I can make this look pretty more detailed actually. All right. So now I'm debating, I guess, with my rock climbing, future buddies in rock climbing, which of the three should I go to? minutes and 12 seconds All right. but you get the idea so it's it's the picture it's maybe some reviews I already feel pretty safe now that I've clicked into these and I know other people will be joining so I'm reading reviews maybe this is where I can stock some of the profiles hmm. The 
let's say these are the people staying there, I can maybe click into their profiles and maybe their profile pops up. So let's say I'm really interested in that one specific one. Now I want to do a little bit more of an in-depth search on that first one. This is where I can see the people's profiles and things pop up from that specific um, Airbnb. So I'm gonna make blue rectangles to show that those were the profiles of the people staying there at the same time as I am. Fifty four seconds. Oops. All right. This doesn't look beautiful, but you get the point. And then now I think I'm pretty ready to book my Airbnb. So there must be a big book button somewhere. And this is more of a flow of creating the, that ability to select what makes most sense for me. So I, I went through a whole workflow here and we are at 23 seconds. So if you have 23 seconds to wrap up your ideas, but you see how this type of ideation is more about finding more problems to solve at, rather than coming up with the final solution. So we're still in problem solving world, even if we're in Figma and, and sketching things out. I know we're going a little over time, but I would still love to hear some of these ideas. Uh, so, uh, Nastasia Jackson, I would love to hear some of your ideas. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> these are crazy ideas. So, um, but that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Um, so, this first one, let let us know how you'll be traveling. So, my idea was like a kind of a a beginning, a, a survey in the beginning, um, you know, whatever questions you would ask, and then you would choose, you know, um, based on the, the, the different multiple choice answers to kind of generate, uh, you know, different people who are answered similar questions, uh, have similar answers as you, to generate like, you know, people that are looking for, um, others to travel with kind of thing where are they going where are they stand how you know for like a survey I love a, a good survey or a good um question air type thing uh and then the next one is like a a group discussion or community discussion always love connection community so uh, search it you can search topics you can join in the discussion I wasn't finished but like basically someone here is um looking to travel next month and wants to travel with a group of people who are willing and you know so kind of just community yeah yeah this is amazing I, I like that so one is more like a, 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 a like a, a focused like getting you all to travel together and one is more open-ended where you're finding the per people you want to travel with. yeah yes exactly I like that that's really cool awesome all right let me zoom out to see some folks that I haven't talked to yet. Um, Maria, would you like to share your ideas? Hi, uh, yes. Um, so I kind of like forms a lot and that's something that I always like approach when I'm designing something. Um, so for, um, the first one I did, like, you know, we were talking about um, uh, renters who feel uneasy, like they don't know their, um, like, uh, I guess, listing hosts. So I, I did like a, like a, I guess, for the listing a host to, to, you know, put that they're open to meet the visitors um, and like even like be able to book appointments uh, if they wanted to like, um, like a Google Meet or something like that. Um, yeah, and then the other one, I, I was talking about the accessibility one. Um, so again, like uh, it would be cool if we could like have our own profile where we have like, oh, I want it to have like other than the filters, of course, like we could have our own like profile where it says like, oh, I need like, I absolutely need a wheelchair accessible uh, or I, I have to have my service dog. So when you get to the listings, it'll show you like, oh, this is a great match for you. 
and uh, yeah, it kind of like like a like a great way to like automatically filter that stuff out for you, and you not have to worry about putting in the filters every yeah. single time. I love that. Yeah, it it takes the thinking out of it, which I really like. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. This is amazing. And I see, wow, I see a lot of folks here. Uh, so Megan and Mark um, working on their designs. That's amazing. I wish we had more time to go through all of these because it goes by fast. The time really goes by fast. I'll go ahead and stop sharing now. All right. Uh, but thank you so much for, for joining us, for coming. I know we, we did a lot in one hour, right? So this was, this was really great to see everyone's problem statements, everyone's potential solutions. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Time flies when you're having fun. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. It was amazing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. See you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Yes, let's do this again next Wednesday. We're redesigning Uber if you guys wanted to join. Awesome. I guess I'll see you then. Nice. It will be great to see you too, Carlo. You've been joining each and every one of these. I love it. Thank you so much.